Look, look. that's right. So I'm looking. And you don't have like giant metal shards coming out of you. And you know, you believe me, I worked in DC, there are needles sticking out of everybody all the time. So you really do need to look pretty well. And then, so if I auscultate, I will be listening. But percussion is very interesting. Thank you, Riley. That was it. So I'm just going to do this as an example. Can you lay your legs out? So <laughs> this is not how you actually do it. This is for demonstration purposes only. I am telling you that there used to be doctors that could tell you how big your liver was. Do you ever see like a carpenter or contractor trying to find the support beam in a wall and they knock on mm -hmm. it and then the sound of the knocking changes when they get to the beam? Yeah. There are doctors that can do that with your organs. I am not one of them and I don't think they exist anymore because everybody just is like wants to do imaging. But back in the day when imaging was not like so easily accessible, they used to go like this. And they'd be like, oh, okay, I hear the change in the sound. The bottom of the liver is here. And then the doctor. Well, they're probably no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, so you probably did know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then it's, oh, I hear the change in the percussion here. The liver is 12 centimeters. Whatever. And it's like magic. You can get up. Look! I look! And she doesn't have like a giant spike protruding. Does anybody remember the four places where you listen for the cardiovascular exam? There's a mnemonic. It's apartment M. Yeah, apartment M. So, our younger colleagues over here will tell you guys. Apartment M stands for A. Yeah. P. And then T. Uh-huh, and then M. Yeah. Genius. Yeah, some of them are only 16 or 17. Amazing. You know what I was doing when I was 16? We won't get thrown on camera. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so we have A, P, T, M. Yeah, you definitely want to warn people because of the region, right? You want to be like, I have to listen to your heart, right? And so that's a good thing. You tell them, I'm going to be listening. Please don't freak out. Um, all right, so do you think that the aortic valve is over here? Or do you think that that's simply a good place to listen to it? It's a good place to listen. None of these things are actually where I'm putting the stethoscope. They're inside of your heart, and so these are just the places where you put the stethoscope to listen to them. Can I listen to the left middle lung? No. No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, your right lung has three lobes, and your left lung only has two. Uh, that's like a trick, so don't be tricked in the future. Okay, so, oh, like I, I was explaining earlier, there's two sides to the stethoscope. And did somebody, did you put together the stethoscope? No. Was it too confusing? I apologize. It was a puzzle. The stethoscope, this big part is called the diaphragm. This little part is called the bell. You would use the bell for smaller things. Like, does anybody know where your jugular is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can actually listen to it, but this would be overkill, it's too big. So the bell would be good for that. So that's just the names of the bigger and smaller parts um, there. So, okay, palpate, you like go like this and like this. That's auscultate, okay? So you can hold this. And so you wanna put the stethoscope on like this. Okay. And then the way that you turn where the sound comes out of, you turn it like this, and then you test it by going like that. Okay, so now it's on the diaphragm. So we're gonna do A, and you just breathe normally. P, T, And then M, mitral valve. That's not where your mitral valve is, don't worry. Okay. So you've all gone to apartment M. You are dismissed.